Cannondale, 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 truck, 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 truck. Oh, guess what? Specialized, 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 and oh, specialized. Bruce, I need something fresh today. I am tired of the same old, same old. You wrote a great article a while back about criminally underrated bike brands. That's right, there's so many. And you got so many good comments on that story, so I think oh, yeah. it's time to take that story into Shop Talk. I'm Spencer. I'm Bruce. This is Shop Talk. Bruce, I think today's sponsor is actually a little underrated. Oh, interesting. Who is it? It's us. Oh. We got all kinds of bikes, whatever type of brand you want. Yeah, overrated, underrated. We got 250 brands. Check out theprosecloset.com and uh, let's get going with the show. It's theprosecloset.com. Okay, Bruce, it's a personality test. Are you the type to ride an underrated bike brand or are you the type to ride a very popular bike brand? Oh, you know, these days, I'm kind of gravitating toward these small, underrated brands. They're often doing like really innovative stuff. Their bike designs are not the sort of thing you see from big manufacturers. Mm. And you know what's really cool is they're often rare, unique. Yeah, you show up to the trailhead and you just flex on everyone with your cool bike. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they are very cutting edge bikes a lot of times, but there are some cons to sure. an underrated bike. They tend to be a little more expensive because they're often small brands, mm -hmm. sometimes handmade. Like you said, they're rare, so if you have your heart set on one of these, it might be a little hard to track it down. And then the funny thing is that uh, we've noticed it here at the Pros Closet, since we buy and sell used bikes all the time, they don't often have as much of a resale value as a, as a mainstream brand, because there's just not as many people out there looking for them. Yeah, I guess just keep it forever. Keep it forever, it could be a forever bike, or not. But anyway, this is our warehouse. We've got so many bikes here. I, I think we've got a great opportunity to learn more about some great underrated bike brands. Yeah, the people here, they see hundreds of different brands every day. All right, let's go talk to them and we'll be right back. What's the brand that's flying under the radar these days? I think Crust. Crust. Crust bikes. Steel, touring, gravel, pretty good option. You have an opinion? On what? Underrated bike brand. Gorilla Gravity. Gorilla Gravity. Uh, the carbon fiber is made in-house. You don't have to wait for the stuff to come overseas. <laughs> GG for the win. Whitson Titanium. They're made, uh, handmade out of Lithuania. Whoa. You managed to stump us. That I've never heard of Whit. Deep How do you cut. spell it? Or W-I-T-T-S-O-N. Felt. Felt. Hmm, okay. Whenever I get a chance to work on them, they're pretty well thought out. Probably some of the best TT bikes to work on as far as cable routing and yeah. ease of work in the time trial world. My go-to Orbea. They're Orbea? one of, our, one of our, yeah. our great partners and I feel like they're underserved here in the US market. They yeah. make some fantastic bikes. You know, I knew it. I knew we'd get some great opinions from our friends here in Ops and uh, I can't believe Steve stumped us. Yeah, what was that again? Whitson. Whitson. Look, I, it, look it up, folks. It sounds, never heard of it, yeah. Sounds like a good one. So what was your favorite brand that they had uh, called out? Gorilla Gravity. Okay, okay. I, I think that's a great pick. You know, they're based here in Denver, Colorado. They're making carbon frames in the USA, and they're using this thing, revved carbon. It's a little more impact resistant, and their frames are modular, so you can go short travel, long travel. You got mm, options. I so like it. I think it. it's a great option. My pick? Crust. I've got a soft spot for Crust. They're this really cool brand that has sort of a vintage inspired design, steel frames. They make mostly gravel bikes and it's almost more like a lifestyle brand than it is a bike brand. Yeah, they're doing something different and that's always cool. So Spencer, I know you got some opinions on underrated bikes. Oh yeah. What'd you pick for the show? Today we're gonna check out Factor One, this ultimate aero bike from the British brand Factor. Pretty underrated, I'd say. Wow, I think that's pretty cool. Factor, they got a little F1 history, a little motorsports that's connection. That's true. You really see it in all the interesting aero features on this bike. Oh, what the heck's this? What? You I've... got two down tubes. So I've literally never seen a carbon bike with that. This is the twin vane down tube, and it is supposed to make things more aerodynamic, and I guarantee you won't find another bike with that kind of feature on it. Really interesting. And then further in the front, what do we have, Bruce? It's our old pal, Otis. Otis. I rode this on the uh, Factor Vista. I loved it. Otis, acronym for One Total Integration System, right? Yeah. Well, Bruce, you found a really unusual underrated bike brand here, didn't you? This is a Forbidden Druid. Okay. Not forbidden, they're a small Canadian company making carbon mountain bikes. Maybe if you're a pink biker, you're heard, you've heard of them, but general public, 
Maybe not. You don't really see these as much out on the trails. Mm -hmm. And this bike is all about the suspension. It uses a high pivot suspension design, which, you know, is the hot thing right now. Yeah, you can see how the chain has to go all the way up through this idler pulley, which enables the suspension to pivot from up here, allowing for a more rearward axle path, which is supposed to help on steep, chunky, yeah. hard descents. But this bike is merely 130 millimeters of rear travel, so it's actually that's, a proper trail bike. That's what's so cool about it. Most companies making high pivot bikes are making long travel enduro bikes, downhill bikes. This, you got 130 mil. You don't really see a high pivot bike with this little travel. It's a great example of about a small, underrated bike brand is leading the way, almost creating a trend of its own. It's only up for Forbidden. They're gonna get bigger. Buy a Forbidden stock. Buy, buy, buy. Okay. I'm gonna buy this bike. One last thing though, Bruce, we've got modern underrated brands, but we've also got vintage underrated brands that I think maybe get lost in the sands of time. Oh. So I think we should pull out a very special bike from the museum that will cap off this ode to the underrated. All right, show me what you got. Dude, what happened to Mongoose? Mm, good question. I don't think Mongoose is the brand they once were, unfortunately. But they were hot once. Back in the 80s, I would, I would argue that Mongoose is a great example of an underrated bike brand that really punched above their weight. And this here, the John Tomac Signature model from 1988, this is the second gen of this bike. And um, I think they did right by Mr. Tomac with this thing. Geometry wise, this bike also was very innovative. This is a much steeper, longer setup. Steeper. Steeper and longer. Radical. Late 80s was the transition into this kind of quote unquote Norba geometry. Oh. Steep, fast, responsive bikes. Yeah, you like them agile and snappy. And kind of sketchy, honestly. There was an era there where you know, your race mountain bikes were very uncomfortable. So thanks a lot, Mongoose. You kind of screwed us with this one. But really though, very cool signature model race bike. You know, anything ridden by Tomac, I'm okay with. It's good enough for Tomac, it's good enough for you. Just go out and have fun, you know, and. And if you take something too serious, you're gonna get burnt out on it. And uh, that's what I try to do is keep it fun. And maybe the Tomac bike brand, maybe it's time for them to make a comeback. I would say that's an underrated brand too. Let us know in the comments what bike brands you think are underrated. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. How many gels do you think you can stash in here? Um, yeah, I think those might get a little dirty.